Gabriel Matias versus Ergachev. What a fight. <laughs> for as long as it lasted, huh? Uh, I didn't make a prediction for that fight. I got lost in everything. I, I didn't even... I, you know, I was so swamped with other things. I didn't even get a chance to get around to a prediction for that one. But you got two power punches. Uh, Sabriel Matias and Ergachev. Sabriel Matias, 100% knockout ratio. Um... Not the best defense. Neither one of these dudes had any real defense. No head movement. It was just straight. They were just going at it, bro. They were just banging. You know, amazing fight card, man. Because we had different styles of fights. The whole fucking fight card. It was crazy. Uh, early on in that fight, from the from the opening bell, we had Ergachev looking sharp. Great um, jab. Good, good combinations. He was piecing up. Matias, first round, he stabbed Matias to the body with a left jab, and it kind of it rocked him backwards, you know, so yeah, you know, I was like, okay, good, we got a fight here, we got a fight here, and this fight ended similar to the David Benavidez Andra fight, man, it almost ended around the same time, and, it, and, and the fight the um the pace of the fight between both between all of these fighters was damn near the same. Go back and watch both of them. Early on, Ergachev was doing good. Early on, Andra was doing good. And then out of nowhere, the you know um around the same amount, like fourth round ish, they just started tiring out, bro. And then they their opponents started pouring it on them, bro. So they couldn't take it no more. And they both. Ended up getting stopped in the corner. Ain't that some shit? Amazing. But Ergachev looked good for maybe what was it? Three rounds? Two or three rounds. I think two or three. Matias started firing at him like he started giving him a little taste of his power around like the second round. Second, third round. He's sneaking in some some real short lefts. Erg was feeling them. It was a couple of times he hit him. And Ergachev will, will move back. He'll push him back. And I'm like, yeah, he's feeling them shots right there. He's just giving them small teases of his power. And then he was slowly breaking down Ergachev, man. And he broke him down to a point where Ergachev, you saw from the first round to like the fourth or third, completely different fighter, man. His punch output was lower. It's, it was it was no steam on his punches. Similar to the way Andrade's punches was to Benavidez. Absolutely no thump behind his punches. Because the power of Sabriel Matias was really getting to Ergachev, man. And unfortunately, he started taking a beating around the fourth round, third to fourth round. He beat him up all for the rest of the duration of that fight, man. Uppercuts, lefts, rights, body work. The pressure of Matias is absolutely insane. You know, you know, as far as skill set, neither one of these dudes was moving their head, and neither one of them was showing any defense. They, they were just getting in there to let it fly. And Matias showed he got a pretty good chin. Dangerous dude, bro. Dangerous dude. Um, got the six round corner stoppage, man. And the scary thing about Matias, man, from 2020 till now, all his fights ended by the towel getting thrown in with the corner. Every last one of them. That is that is un, that is unbelievable. So, yeah, yeah, um, this dude is an issue. He's gonna be a real problem at 140 pounds, man. And that is why I kind of can see why people calling him out. And then plus on top of that, man, if y'all remember a fighter named Maxim Dadashev back in 2019, he was killed, man. He died after the fight with, with Sabriel Matias, man. He died in there, bro. He died and he died. So pretty much Sabriel Matias has a real life body, bro. And this could be one of the reasons why you don't see many people at 140 pounds calling him out. You know, and this is probably one of the reasons why I said Devin Haney, uh, he got his work cut out for him at 140 pounds. If 
he believes in his ability though um then and i'm all for it you know but like i said um all of the dudes at 140 that hold the belts are are heavy hitters some are less skilled than others but yeah um yeah he got he got a lot of dudes with some serious power that he had to take belts from man and this Matias dude is at the top of that uh power power chain so to speak very dangerous dude he has relentless pressure uh dynamite in both his hands and i mean this is why we just don't talk about him he kind of like act like he don't even exist but eventually, man, if you want to be great, they're going to have to see Matias, whoever it is, rather it's Regis, Devin, uh, Roly, <laughs> uh, whoever, um, Tiafimo Lopez. You know, so I'm going to have to give soon. 140 is looking really nutty right now, bro. 140 is going to, is, 140 is insane, dude. 140 is absolutely insane. But, Matias defended his title and stopped Ergashev and on to the next one for uh, Sabrina Matias. What's next for him? Um, I don't know. You got some other champions in there. You, you know, you could try to unify with Tia Fima Lopez, Roley, and then maybe the Devin versus uh, Regis winner. Got Gary Antoine Russell's another dude up there. That's another 100% knockout fighter. That would be a good fight. See how that ends. That would be a really good fight. So, yeah, 140 looking crazy, man. You got Ryan Garcia's up there now and all these dudes like that. So, interesting division to watch, man. But uh, shout out to Chef for giving it all he had. He just, he just got he just got gassed out, beat to, a, beat to a submission, bro, pretty much. He just, he didn't have it in him, bro. That that pressure is, is insane from Sabriel Matias, man. But let me know what you thought about this fight, man. One of the best fights of the night. This is Rebel Life Boxing. I will catch y'all later on the next one.